Hi folks, it's Paul. Welcome back to Recycle Model Railways. So, you've seen by the title, I've been buying again. But, let's see why I've been buying, because I wasn't planning to. We'll catch you in a second. Right, so, why have we got all these locals sitting on the table? When somebody here turned around and said, Oh, I'm not going to buy any more stuff until such times as I finish all the wagons I've bought. Yeah, don't listen to me, I talk rubbish. Anyway, in Peter's Spares, about 10 days ago, picking up a couple of bits, had a little bit of a look around, and one of the only locals, one of the very few locals that I don't have in a diesel fleet, is Class 20s. And they end up looking at the Bachman Class 20 latest release. Wow. Absolutely wow. What a piece of kit. Stunning to look at. Beautiful craftsmanship. The detailing is out of this world. Um, if you have a Class 20, you would run them in pairs. Okay, Peter Spares, how much for two? Just over 380 quid. Anyway, I did stand there for all of about 10 seconds and thought, should I? Should I? And I thought, mmm, go and think about this, Paul. Don't make a spot decision. And I got back in the car and a couple of days later I sat there and I thought, I don't buy new stuff. I buy the stuff that nobody else wants or the stuff that people are selling because they want to get something bigger and better. And I thought, just how much stuff can I get? for 380 quid you're looking at it so the green class 47 two blue class 47s two 50s one blue one green an 08 an Ivert 2F two 37s a 50 and a Hymec 13 vehicles I didn't count that because I don't know what it is we'll come back 13 vehicles without postage 311 quid some postage was combined because I bought more than one local off one seller. A couple of guys gave me free postage and this erroneous thing here, which I keep pointing at, I've got, I got zero postage. So what's my point? My point is, I could have been sitting here looking at two beautifully stunning Class 20 Backmans and I wouldn't have been able to do a damn thing to them. Because everything you could do is done. And it would be an offence to do anything to them other than weather them. That's not me. I want to mess about. I want to put my own touch on them. I want to say that I did this and I did that and I did the other. So we went back and did what we always do. We scoured eBay and we look. I put no more than a £25 maximum bid on every engine here. And if it went for 26 it was tough. That was what I decided. That's when I thought I wanted to stop at. So, we bought them all. There is another 08 I'm bidding on because I know where I can put my hands on a local conversion kit to turn it into a class 13. I've seen one of them that was gifted to Charlie Bishop um, on Chadwick Mother Railway and I really liked it and I know it was a specific to Tinsley Yard for a very specific reason and I don't care it's in my era and it's my layout so I'll put what I want on it simple as that so up and coming project make a class 13 right out of what we bought what works what doesn't it all works every single loco runs exactly as it should we are not looking at pardon me, spares or repairs they are all in full working order do I, what do I have to do to them? well, it's me I'll mess about, I'll detail them but, unfortunately the 237s, which are pretty nice, to be fair um, they're the wrong colour for me, it's the wrong era so, unfortunately the 237s have got to get painted Um both of the 47s here have had somebody messing around with them in the past. That one isn't 
too bad, although the weather in, if I just show you, the weather in shocking. <laughs> it's just like a slab of brown paint here and a slab there. Um, it's not too bad. You could chuck it on your low, on your layout and run it. This one is really badly hand painted. It's awful. But it was cheap and I don't care and I don't mind restraining it. So, all in all, there's nothing saying you can't run all of them as they are. The green one in the box is beautiful. The high mech in the box, the green high mech, is beautiful. Um, I'm happy with what I've got because I got a lot for 70 quid less than I'd have coughed out of Peter Spears. Right, let me get to the thing I keep touching because I, I was really taken with this little thing. This is something that I picked up at Red Cat Model Railway Show yesterday. Um, it was being sold by Triang Man. I'm sure you've seen his adverts, you might have seen him at shows. It is not English or Italian. Um, it's made by a company called AHM, made in Yugoslavia. No idea where that is, but Triang Man was happy to put it on some track and run it up and down, up and down, and it was faultless. It's got a very bad paint job. It's not the scale because these buffers, even though one's missing, are a mile off. It needs a fair bit of work. But you know what? I was really taken by it because it kind of looks like a 14, which <laughs> I think at about 180 quid. Um, it's very skinny. I did wonder if it was an HO scale at first. But I like it. And I think that if I strip it, and repaint it and put some modifications on I think I can make a really interesting logo out of that so I know it's not for everybody and I know some people might say hey you're putting an American logo or a foreign logo on your I don't care as long as it in, I've got a picture in my head of what I want it to look like and if it does it's going on my layout and it's running around and anyone who wants to pass comment about what the hell's that do yourself a favour don't bother because I won't even bother acknowledging you it's a nice looking local. I'm not that much, although I, I set a period ish of when I want to work, uh, I'm not a rivet counter. This doesn't fit in, I know, but I like it so I don't care. There you go. So, my point is for new modelers. If there's new modelers out there thinking about coming in to this hobby who think, wow, isn't it expensive? It can be, I agree. It can be very expensive. It doesn't have to be. Look at what I've got here. It doesn't have to be expensive at all. Now, when I started this channel several years ago, stuff was even cheaper. I'm guessing that it was COVID that jacked all the prices up because nobody had anything to do. Um, same as when I come back to this, I noticed an awful lot of new channels on YouTube that weren't around before. Um, so obviously, you know, the model railway thing's gone up in the world, which is good. But I still think the high prices put people off starting. Don't be put off. Get on eBay. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, then just make sure you buy something that's guaranteed as running. Alternatively, go to a show, buy something at a show. Um, because they'll show you them running, or they should. Anyway... <coughs> enough chatter about the trains I have got an update on other things and at the end I have a, a question question to everybody watching the videos and I'd really like to see any answers or suggestions that people give me so let me just tuck all this away a second and then I'm going to come back give you an update on what else I've been up to uh, I'm not going to be doing any work on the videos today I just want to crack on with it um, without thinking about camera on camera off etc um, but yeah let me do this I'll be back in a second so here's an update here's an update on everything else that I've been up to as you can see someone's been on eBay again so <laughs> do I have an excuse no not really uh, kind of these here MGR coal wagons one guy selling 11 and I thought, hmm, I don't have any of those. Let's just keep an eye on this and see what they go for. Expecting it to be 
quite a high price. They've been kind of weathered by someone. It wasn't the last guy because he kind of bought them um, full of lawfully out. They never got started. So they've kind of been weathered. They've got core loads. They've got the capes put on, as you can see. Some don't, but there went his. And I watched it. And I bought 11 for £66. Come on, folks, that's cheap for an MGR. So, I decided, well, I've got 11, I need 20. Make it realistic. So, bit by bit, I bought 20. I bought three off one person, three off another, that had me up to 17. And then I had to buy the last three, which was that one, that one, and this one, as single items. But, Total price, 20 wagons averaged out at £6 per unit. So, that's madness. I could, generally speaking, I lost more of these because I wouldn't bid up. But I got them in the end. So we've got 20 MGRs. Sitting at the back, got my favourite coaches. Two Lima Mark 1s for, I think they were £10.50. I can't ignore that. I've got more coaches than Softmake. But two Lima brake coaches for £10.50 in a box. Come on, I can't walk away from that. And I like Mark ones. I think they've got more style about them. Anyway, what else? The thing at the back there is a bottle holder that I got from a Wrecker Railway show yesterday. Uh, two bottles of Rail Match uh, Frame Dirt. Two bottles of Roof Dirt. A bottle of Humbrol Black Wash. A bottle of Rust. 10 of uh, Parkside's coal loads which fit perfectly in the MGRs um, I've got two packets of capes and a couple that the guy sent me from the 11 the brass hand sport wheels that's um, just direct out of Peter's that's what ended up putting me down the route of the class 20s and then buying 30 locos um, so then we've got 10 of these and I'm fairly sure up my loft I've got about 13 I've got a couple of toad vans one very very small guards van a Kellogg's and I got 5 more of the bloody insult fish things so let me bring this to the front so it's not fixed on yet as you can see or you would see if I point the camera in the right place it's not fixed on yet um, but they're getting there they're getting there but I said at the beginning I have a big question now this is in connection with this that as a rake these as a rake them wagons there as a rake not uh, probably the freight liners as well but not the siphon G's the siphon G's I've already put any M pockets on so and I might want to attach one or two to a train but not run all eight of them in a rake whereas this stuff these these will run as a rake that I don't intend to split so I'm sure the clever ones amongst you have worked out what he's going to ask has anybody got any suggestions for couplings? These bloody Hornby D things are not staying on. I hate them. I don't see the point in wasting money and time fitting any M pockets and any M couplings because I want them permanently connected. Now, I did buy, um, for those of you that are old enough to remember net curtains, the little sort of spiral thing. That had a screw it screw head on for the end of your neck curtain wire. I bought some of those in black and I thought, oh, I can fasten one to one side and fasten one to the other. The trouble is the size I bought that I wanted to be inconspicuous are not long enough. Uh, I'll I'll get a buffer lock before they've even come together. So if anybody has any ideas or suggestions. I did watch a video from uh, Richard at Everard Junction the other day. Uh, he did this on his MGRs, but I didn't really like how it was done. I want something a bit smaller, a bit less conspicuous. Um, but anyway, if you've got an idea as to how I could connect these things up without spending pockets of money, 
I want them just connected as cheap and cheerfully as possible. That works. That isn't going to cost a fortune because I don't see the point. If I want to spend a load of money, I'll just put any end pockets on all of them. Um, I was going to, but then, you know, somebody banged me on the head and made me realise if it's a fixed rake, why do you need to? As long as I can take them off each other, then obviously, you know, if you want to take one off, I don't have to take 21 off at the same time. Um, but I'm just looking for ideas so that going along the line as we produce rakes, mostly to do with wagons, I'm never going to do it the coaches. But with wagons, I'd like an option of a way, pardon me, of a way around it so that I can connect them up. Anyway, I've bored the crap out here, as I always do. Um, I hope you enjoyed the bit about the locos. Um, I hope some people see the point of it. The point was to try and introduce new people in and to stop them thinking that it's an horrendously expensive hobby. Um, and wifey, if you watch this, which I know you probably won't, but the kids will, so if you're watching it, tell mum I want two Backman Class 20s out of Peter's Spurs for Christmas. That's it, folks, for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Please get me some comments on here about how to fix these wagons. We'll see you all later. Ta-ra now.